Welcome back to Coin Sense and Nonsense. Today, we've got another in our collection of ship coin commemoratives. We got our Walloon, uh, Huguenot Walloon tercentenary, and we got our Long Island. So we got another slabbed one, and this is a pilgrim coin, and Where's the ship again, you're saying? Well, we got to look at this side first to check the details. It does look pretty cool. It's got some interesting color. Um, it is a bastard child. I'm trying to keep everything like PCGS, but here we are. The deal was right on this one. Plus, I like the, the coloring and the toning or whatever. All right, just show the ship. There it is. So this is very, very cool. Look at the toning on that one. I like it. Sorry about the reflection with the light, but in order to get one, you got to have the other. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is really cool. I consider possibly doing like a, a crossover, they call it, when you go uh, from one grading service to the other, but I'd want to guarantee that I didn't go down and grade, so I don't know. So... Let's take a look at this. This coin has an interesting history. Um, it, is, it does show as 1920. And this coin actually was um, minted over two different years. They decided to take advantage. They said there's no legislation that says you can't. So um, they originally um, authorized 300,000 of these to be minted. And... Uh, so, but unfortunately they didn't get started until late in the year in 1920. So they only minted like, uh, 200,000 or so that first year, uh, but they didn't sell a lot. And, but the commission, I guess, was bound and determined and they said, hey, we're going to mint the other 100,000 in 1921. And so... What they did is they stamped a 1921 right there, and they figured collectors would have to have it. So they were trying to take advantage of us way back then, and they wanted us to, or wanted collectors to, like, have to buy both years in order to be, like, having their collection satisfied. Isn't that nice? So, and the rough seas and all, this is cool. This does have an interesting story, too. Check out that sail in the uh, bow of the boat, the front of the boat. That's a jib sail, a flying jib. That didn't exist during the 1620s. So, whoopsie, the designer uh, kind of took some liberties there. I think that they were rushed to try to get this design out, and that's what happens. So, um... Okay, did I get off track? I think I did. So they minted this for two years. Uh, the, they said uh, 100,000 uh, in 1921, and they hardly sold any. So they ended up melting a bunch. And so there's only like 20,000 of the 1921s and 152,000 of these 1920s. So that's the story there. Uh, the 1921s obviously are worth more, uh, probably about like 75 bucks more, depending on each uh, grade level you go. Um, you know, it's not quite twice as much in value, but it, it uh, does add up. So let's quit rambling on and check it out under the scope. And I'll think if there's anything else I can tell you now that I've talked your ear off. But let's uh, we'll be right back. Alright, so here we go. This looks pretty cool already, and I haven't even... Oh, there it is. So, for a 1920 coin, not too bad. It's got lots of nice detail in the rigging and whatnot. Uh, tercentenary. So... There, there is a die variety, believe it or not, uh, for this coin. Um, there is um, a, a die break that starts kind of in this area. So my coin doesn't have it, but uh, that is one of the recognized uh, ones in the Cherry Picker's Guide. So very 
Very cool. There's that wrong sail. It's supposed to be a square sail in the front of the boat or in the bow, they call it. Or So that's like a flying jib. That didn't exist until much, much later. So Interesting. So let's check out the other side. All right, and so this dapper dude is uh, Governor William Bradford. And so he was said to represent the typical pilgrim of the time. And supposedly he's carrying a Bible, but there's controversy there. There's another another writer who seems to think it's another it's a book about plantations. So anyway, a pilgrim plantation or something like that almost looks like it's got a doubling there, but I don't think it is. So. Oh, and there's the D. Um, supposedly, that was like an afterthought. The original um, sculpted model had the designer's like full initials. This one, this one looks like they just used the D from a uh, mint mark punch. So, Dolan is his last name. And, uh, yeah, I think he got ripped off there on that one. So... Cool coin. Let's go back to regular view, though, so we can take in the Tony. All right, so I gotta love this coin. And it is the 400th anniversary now of the Mayflower. And so this is a hot topic in uh, silver bullion coins. There are some issues of uh, Mayflower 400th anniversary. And they sell out quick, so I thought it would be cool to share this one with you. Um, sort of coincidental, but still, 400th anniversary nonetheless, and a very, very cool coin. So I'm happy to uh, add it to my collection of uh, ship commemoratives. Uh, I just wish it were in the similar holder, but we've already drilled that into the ground, haven't we? So... Gotta love these early commemoratives, and um, yeah, actually that's probably more the traditional style sail there, that square sail, so speaking of driving things into the ground there with the jib sail, but yeah. Anyway, I hope you have all enjoyed checking out these latest commemoratives, or this latest commemorative, and thank you so much for watching Coin Sense and Nonsense. Until next time, bye. Right?